but there were actually ones that had up to 120 spindles. Those ones wouldn't have been in the home. They were in what were called jenny shops, which were like the first factories, where somebody would have bought um, quite a few of these big jennies and then hired women to come in and work on them. But these small ones were in the home. So all these spindles along the front here, they all spin at the same time by turning this wheel at the side. And then to draft the cotton, so to get nice fine threads, um, you can just clamp it with this bar here and then pull back and spin at the same time. And then to get this spun cotton back onto the spindles at the front, there's a bar underneath that I haven't lifted my foot, which just lowers that bar at the front that you can see. And that just helps to guide the cotton back onto the spindles. But when the spinning jenny was first invented, it was actually very controversial. Because one woman on a jenny could do the same amount of work as 16 women with spinning wheels, everyone who had a spinning wheel and who relied on that for their income started to fear for their work. So if you were lucky enough to have a jenny, you would have actually wanted to keep quiet about it, and you would have hidden it away in a cupboard in your house, because if the neighbours found out that you owned one of these, they might have actually broken in and smashed it to pieces. Um, if you go downstairs today though, you'll see we've got a spinning mule. That's a combination of the jenny and a water frame, and that one has 560 spindles that all spin at the same time. So that really shows how this idea then progressed into the industrial age and into the mills. Um, but I hope that's given you a nice um, overview of cotton before the mills, and also a little bit closer to some of the processes that the machines will be doing as well. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.